I like to think when I walked out on the field, I went out there to entertain and I went out to win. We wouldn't remember 2005 as fondly as we do if it wasn't for Shane Warne. 600 wickets. He was the conductor in his natural habitat. Shane Warne's got two for naught. We beat the sides with the greatest cricket of all time in it. I'm not going to retire from cricket until we've got the Ashes back. Warning and the Aussie squad are being put through their paces in the southeast Queensland outback to prepare for the Ashes. England outplayed us last time and they deserved the win and it's gone. For the first time I've noticed for a while is that that hunger and that passion is back. There was obviously a very deliberate plan. We're on our home territory here. You have come into the lion's den and we're going to make it very, very painful for you. We poked the bear in 05 and the bear was going to come roaring back in 6-7. He told me after the series that Cricket Australia had given him a right going over for being too friendly to me. The crowd is building up here at the Gabba today. It's all ready to go here in Brisbane. The Aussie boys, they were ready. And they were, and the, and they were for the first time, they were going to be desperate for ball one. We've had a bit of a hiccup but I like to think that in our own backyard, we're pretty tough to beat. Now it's just a matter of execution. That's a good shot. Go. Well, that's going to be it, I think. Ricky Ponting's managed to work this into the onside. The bat is raised, and the Australian captain goes to three figures. From the moment the first test match started, it was a very different environment. It was like, we're going to show them who's boss here. Every time Shane Warne came on to bowl, the bars would empty, the crowd would fill up, the atmosphere would go up tenfold. And the spectators just delaying their lunch. There's Shane Warne bowling after all. You knew you were watching the king of spin bowling. In my view, the king of any kind of bowling. Work is magic. <laughs> ah! Big shout for LB Buckner says out! Yeah, yeah! Big shout, inside edge, onto the pad, Shane Warne. The conversations away from the game had almost dried up. There was a line drawn in the sand. This is battle. You're in my turf. We're going to beat you. And that's all I'm interested in. Oh, yes, Aggression from Warren. They're supposed to like each other, these two. It was actually uncomfortable because we were buddies. He was dying for a comment to come back. Don't see Lara all turned off to be able to understand. Bowler bowling to a bat from the competition said that's a given, but sometimes it wasn't enough for him. He wanted the verbal as well to inspire him more, to make him get more out of himself. to the 90s, Paul Collingwood. A lot of cricketers used to say, I'm playing the ball, not the man. They always played the man. I think we all knew that you couldn't afford to play the man. <laughs> That's an easy thing to say in a team meeting. It's another thing when he is all over you like a rash in the middle and one false move could be incredibly humiliating. Down the pitch, he's gone. Dylan stuffed him outside off stump. Chain one. Toiled away, loves the challenge. And he's just turned over Paul Collingwood on 96, dancing down the pitch. Shane would make them play the man. He'd get in their heads. He'd play on their vulnerabilities. Oh, oh, Where's it got to? It's high, it's straight to the man at long on. People are going to ask what on earth was happening there. 
the air. Glenn McGrath is under it. Glenn McGrath takes it. And the test match is over. First blood to Australia, and they've done it in some style. I think I became a smarter and better bowler towards the end. The last two or three years was better than any stage in my career. You might not be able to do what he did or play like he did, but you can think in that way. There's no better way to think. He never gave up. He always believed he could do something, and he, he was always, always looking at things from a positive point of view. Amazing Adelaide. Mm. I thought it was one of the most boring tests until the last morning. Shane Warne's the man who could give England a bit of a nightmare this morning. He is a great bowler, so anything can happen in a session with him bowling. But um, I'd like to think that the game is pretty safe and uh, there's only one result that can happen here, and that's a draw. His whole attitude, even from the night before, was the complete opposite to me. He believed we were going to bowl England out. He believed we were going to chase the runs. He believed that England were going to try and defend and block, and that was going to be their greatest mistake. If there is one dangerous mindset to get into against Shane Warne, it's just looking to survive. Well, it really is all about this first hour or so. It's all about Warne. Yeah. I got given out erroneously. <laughs> I didn't hit the ball, but that started things going. The crowd's filling in, coming down from the city of Adelaide. A bit of hesitation. No, this is dangerous. If he hits, he's gone. He's gone. It just turned into a magnificent day's play. This is one of my greatest regrets. That bugger bowled me around my legs there when I said to him, you will never bowl. I said, you're embarrassing yourself. You're never going to bowl me around my legs. He said, never. You will never, ever bowl me around my legs. see when he actually gets KP, he's like looking for me, like, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. Then it just built and Warren became irresistible in those moments. Oh, yeah. Next and gone, the Warren Hayden combination strikes. When he got his eyes peeled on something and he believed in something, boy, did it happen. Well, well it's beautifully bold, Shane Warren. He believes we're going to win that test match. Shane Warne, well, take about 27 overs unchanged today, 4 for 29. Every other player in the Australian team would say, yeah, we believe, we believe. Not like him. You can see those, so, buddy. One to win. There it is, arms aloft. What a win for Australia. A stunning Test match victory here in Adelaide got themselves into a winning position today with some wonderful leg spin bowling from Shane Warne. He was a fan favourite. The great value of Shane was his genius as a bowler, but his willingness to get down and dirty with the rest of us. He's probably the ultimate Australian as well. He was a boy from Black Rock in Melbourne, played a bit of AFL, Dumpy sort of guy with a long strawberry blonde hair. He had the mullet, he was overweight, so old school 80s Australian. And all of a sudden, he becomes this superstar. A different world to us. We even walked into his house at times and go, we played the same game, right? He was the personification of the Aussie larrikin. He liked a drink and a fag and a laugh. If there was an autobahn, and there was a fast car. Shawnee was in that fast car driving the fastest in the fast lane. As much as you can get sporting or cultural royalty in Australia, that was Shane Warne. After Adelaide, your confidence is at its absolute highest and that allowed us to play with freedom in Perth. I thought if we win here in Perth, we're going to be 3-0 up. The ash is gone. I'm going to retire. We got blown away. Yeah. It's the back cuts, the back's up. Uh, Michael 
Michael Clark has his fourth Test hundred. By that stage, we're rocking with that team as well. This is hitting like you've never seen in a Test match from Adam Gilchrist. It's humiliating watching Gilchrist get that hundred. Magnificent Test match hundred for Adam Gilchrist that has come in 57 deliveries, and it's the second fastest Test hundred in history. The train had come off the tracks. And we capitulated again. We got a total shellacking. Fitting that Shane Warne got the final wicket to win the Ashes back. And what a surprise, Shane Warne is the man who's done it. When I thought back to how Shane felt having lost the Ashes in 05, that within a year, he had that moment. 17 seasons of international cricket, it all happened so fast. He walked into his news conference to applause. Once the urn was back, then it was going to be time to announce a retirement. His last test wicket won the Ashes back. His next one will be number 700, surely out here in front of 100,000 fans. He was just so proud of Melbourne. He was a pure Victorian. What were you thinking driving in here on day one? I was worried about my tickets, actually. I've got my father, my mother, my brother and his friends, a couple of my best mates. I've got a couple of Hampshire mates. Yeah, cheers, I was there, actually, on the day. Another mate of mine from Hampshire, Chris Benham, he was there with us as well. It was amazing to be part of it, um, for him to, you know, want us to be there as well. It was an awesome experience. That Melbourne day, that was just about as good as it got. He was an actor. The MCG was his favourite place to act, and they were his favourite crowd. There ain't no fairy tales, mate, but this is probably as good as it's going to get. It was always going to happen, wasn't it? Morning was going to get his last big, big milestone at the MCG. It's 2 for 82. He did that very well, Warney. If he deliberately held back that 700th test wicket, gee, he's a genius. A script written deserved it's something that only the greats of the greats can write. All right, listen to this. Crack it was noisy. They got the score. They got the champion. Only him in Melbourne as well. 98,000, his home ground. Entertaining so many people, they just willed him on to get that wicket. Shane Warne has got the ball at last. The truth is, I got out to Shane Warne a lot. Ah! 700 for Shane Warne! What a way to get there! There was this extraordinary guttural roar from the MCG. The noise was just unbelievable. I've never seen Warnie move so fast. I mean, it was a small loop, but for him, it was a monster loop. But I was just so proud of him too, because he was my buddy. What a great moment that was for Warnie and his family. If anybody deserved that moment, it was him. Sat back in the chair that night with a quiet beer and a dart, thinking that was a pretty good day. But here he is, the man of the moment, the man of the MCG, the G is his. Take this in. He made our team better. He made cricket better. His final goodbye, his swan song, the most perfectly written script. The fact that the players cheered him off the field in that game showed you how much they loved playing with him. In that moment, you just felt the love in this stadium. 90-odd thousand people going crazy for their king.
Australians are waking up to the news this morning that Shane Warne has passed away. It was just one of those moments that you just didn't think could be true. I thought it was a hoax. I read more messages and I could see it wasn't a hoax and I was just in disbelief. It was the first time in my life I think I'd ever really um, like lost anyone like that. And, um, yeah, it was like, it took a quite a while to sink in. I can't text him. I can't ring him, and, and I'm not going to see him. It just goes to show how precious life is and how quickly it can change. I think back to the memorial, and I think Shane would have loved it. My eyes were just cloudy and, and full of tears watching the kids. You always wanted to be around us, and that is something that I took for granted. <laughs> Thinking that you were always going to be around. <sighs> when you've got kids yourself, you just can't imagine what they must go through and then the way they spoke about him. The kindness he forever showed. <laughs> the humour he had without even trying to be funny. And most of all, he was so thoughtful and one of the happiest people I ever knew. He was a very interesting and interested person that gave a lot. The world has lost a real character who was full on engaged with society. I don't think there's another cricketer that I ever saw that had as much love for the game to give back, whether it be coaching kids, setting up a foundation, a charity, signing autographs. My God, I never once saw him say no to signing an autograph and there's still a host of aspiring young leg spinners who, who want to be like Shane Warne. This good-looking, funny, sharp, slightly badly behaved, always loyal, great Australian patriot. Shane could do genius, rock star and mate like no one else. A genuinely good bloke and pretty much the most fun guy in the room. You would walk into a room and everyone would stand up and just be happy to be in your presence. You did everything with so much passion. I looked up to you as my hero and I admired how hard you worked. I was so proud of everything you do. I'm so proud that you are my dad. His legacy will live on through his children and how good a dad he was and what a normal, down-to-earth guy that tried to play footy for St Kilda all those years ago, ended up playing cricket, but has a beautiful family. Whatever they try and achieve in their life, they'll always have a little bit of the king, obviously, inside them, just saying, go on, you can. We're going to do what you always told us, try our best, and we will try our best to live in a world without you. He will go down as one of the all-time greatest to ever play the game. But more than that, he was someone who cherished friendship, and cherished being a dad, and cherished being a son. I think that everyone who knew Shane feels a tremendous sense of loss. In Shane's typical humble manner, the Aussie boy from Blackrock said of himself, I smoked, I drank, and I played a little cricket. Mate, your mother and I cannot imagine a life without you. You've been taken too soon and our hearts are broken. Thank you for all you did for us. And for being such a loving and caring son. Rest in peace, mate. Love you, Mum and Dad.